I did a video a couple years ago on how to secure TrueNAS Core. Now, because TrueNAS Core is not end of life here in August 2024, but it has not really received any feature updates, it's still just being maintained. So that video is still completely relevant, and I'm doing a new one today on how to secure TrueNAS Scale. That question comes up a lot. I also will reference, and you'll find it linked down below, my video on storage design. I will mention it a couple times that it's good storage design if you want a more in-depth answer for what good storage design is and how to set up your scale or core system, either one or even any other NAS system, do take a peek at my video about storage design and architecture because that also plays into your security posture for how you set up your NAS. Now, we're going to talk today about 2FA, properly binding services and scale, and where all those settings are. So let's get started. <music> Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structured cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now we're going to be doing this demo on a TrueNAS scale Dragonfish 24.04.2. That's the latest version here in August of 2024. And I want to mention physical security. If it is something you're trying to mitigate, the threat of someone taking your TrueNAS, well, in that case scenario, you want to make sure you're using ZFS data sets with encryption, with specifically passphrase encryption. The key encryption does encrypt the data, but that is also stored within the configuration of TrueNAS, and rebooting the system allows those keys to automatically unlock the system. Now, this does prevent people from just simply taking your data drives and putting them into another system. They would also have to acquire your boot drive. Or in this scenario, where someone completely takes your TrueNAS, they would be able to just boot the system up and it would unlock automatically. Having a good passphrase is key to keeping people from that data in the event that your TrueNAS is physically taken. I have a video link down below where I dive deeper into ZFS encryption if you wanna learn more about it, but it's relatively easy to set up when you're creating a data set, just choose passphrase as the option. Now related to physical security is setting up the console so it does not allow someone to easily just reset the password. Do this with caution. We're gonna go here to system settings and then advanced, and we're gonna look at our console settings. By default, kind of oddly worded, show text console without password prompt. That means no password on the text console for when someone plugs in the monitor right to the system with a keyboard. This would allow someone to easily reset an admin password. That someone might be you. So before you turn this off, make sure you've well documented your admin password because if you forget it, it becomes substantially more difficult to try to get into a system where you have to go in and modify a password. It can be done, can at least go through here and not allow them to just walk up to the system provided you have a keyboard and mouse plugged into it and simply change the admin password. You just simply uncheck that box, hit save, and that box is checked by default, by the way, and now it'll no longer allow someone to go in and just walk up to the system and be able to log in, unless they present a username and password. Now from here, let's talk about multi-factor authentication and users. If you didn't notice, and this is done on install now, it suggests that you not use root. I suggest that you not use root either. Admin's probably not a great choice in terms of people guessing what the username is, but for demonstration purposes, I left this one at admin. Clicking on admin, we can click on the two-factor authentication. No worries, I'm sharing this right here. You can try and scan it yourself. Yes, it'll work. Yes, it'll be changed because this is the demo system that I erase and reset after videos. This lets you set up the 2FA secret, make sure it's correct. There is not currently in TrueNAS a prompt to validate this. So when we go through the process of setting up MFA, do make sure you test this by opening up another browser window to make sure you can log in before you close or exit out of this one. So this is where you'll build the 2FA secret, scan this with your phone, it's standard TO2P authentication. Then you're gonna go to system settings and we're gonna go back over to advanced. You're just gonna scroll down to the bottom here and global two-factor authentication. We're gonna click configure 
and simply enable it. Do set a window size of one. This lets the time skew go a little bit further and gives you more time to enter that number as opposed to when it's almost counting down, you get that last digit and it rolls over. It won't let you authenticate. This has caused problems when the systems are maybe even a few seconds out of sync. Also, it's worth noting, always have your NTP servers, which are also set up by default on here. Double check that that's working. You're not getting errors. The time is correct on both the device that you're scanning with, which is your phone. Generally, phones have high accuracy time here in 2024. And your TrueNAS system, make sure the time is correct because if the time is not correct, the numbers will not match. But this window of one offers some skewing on there. There's not a need to enable two-factor authentication on SSH because I'm going to recommend that you not allow passwords on SSH next. Also worth noting, once you click save here, it will bring you back to let you know that it's been configured and bring up the secret one more time, validate this. And this is where, as I noted, go to another browser, confirm you can log in before closing any of this because I can go back in here to system settings and then advance. We're gonna go back over to configure and I can turn it off while I'm in here and go ahead and hit save. And you can see if you've locked out the console and locked out this with 2FA and didn't have it set up properly, you have now effectively locked yourself out of your own TrueNAS. All right, next we're going to go from system settings to services, and let's talk about SSH. We're going to go ahead and configure it and only turn on SSH if you need it. It is off by default. Change support if you feel the need to do so. Then we have allow password authentication. We want to leave that unchecked and also go down here to advanced and only bind to the interface, not IP addresses. This binds to interfaces that you need SSH available on. This will minimize the potential threat surface and keep your SSH more secure. Having the allow password authentication only also means we should be going over to credentials, local users, and for any user that we want to have SSH access, we want to click edit and we want to make sure we add their authorized key here because this is what allows them to log in. So you simply paste the key file here. Now let's go back over our services and look at NFS. When you click on NFS, we have bind to IP address. So we can bind to either one of these IP addresses or any of the ones that you have assigned to your system. By default, it's going to bind to all of them, but we can implicitly check them and uncheck them as needed. So we only have it available where it needs to be. Further with NFS, we're going to go over here to our shares themselves. If we edit an NFS share and you scroll down here to the advanced options and you can add a specific network or a specific host. Only add the host that you want to connect to your NFS. This is the proper way to lock that down. Now we can go back over to services and look at SMB. It works the same way, except it's under advanced and it's all the way at the bottom where they have bind IP addresses, same menus by leaving it blank, it's bound to all, and we can implicitly check which ones we want it bound to. Samba does not have, however, specifics when you go over to the shares under advanced, there are no parameters to give you very implicit IPs that it attached to. You can only bind it to the different IPs for allow access. After that, Samba uses the username system to delegate access. So username, password, controlled either via TrueNAS or if you've connected to an external authentication server, that's what will control your access to your Samba shares. Now with iSCSI, it's a little bit different because the best way to do it is really to go through the wizard. The wizard will create the initial portal and all the different targets and then you set implicit IP information within the wizard itself. That's the best way to lock that down. So we can go ahead and create new. And then you would add the IP addresses here that you want this bound to. So that's the best practice for iSCSI. Now from here, let's go to system settings and we're going to go over to general. In the GUI settings, we're going to go to settings and you can choose your theme. You can choose the certificate. You can also choose the web interface bind IP address. Once again, by default, it's going to bind to and list 0000. That is going to bind to all of them. If we only want it on certain interfaces, we're going to uncheck those and check the interfaces we want it bound to. Preferably, if you have a dedicated management network, this would be ideal because this is the control that a threat actor or anyone who wants to destroy the system or do something nefarious needs is to really get to the UI or via SSH. The UI is obviously a place where people are most familiar with it and the most likely place to be attacked. So locking this down is important. By default, it's going to be 80 and 443, your standard ports. You can have it redirect in case you land on port 80 to redirect to port 443 by checking this box here. And that's all you have to do to lock down the web GUI. My last tip may seem a little bit obvious, but seriously, people, 
update your systems. So many people don't want to touch it once it's working. I get that fear, but the reality is the update process is rather painless. With TrueNAS, they use a boot slicing system. So if you do a system update, you can go back to the boot slice and go back to that previous working state that the system was in. I've covered this before. It's not that painful to do the updates and it's easy to roll back and recover from them. Doesn't mean you shouldn't back up first and every precaution shouldn't be taken, but do keep your system up to date. That is a big problem in security is a lot of unpatched systems for anyone keeping up with the current happenings around cybersecurity in general. But I want to hear from you. Leave your thoughts and comments down below on how you like to secure your NAS or how you like to set things up. I always interested in hearing from all of you. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion on that topic, head over to my forums, forums.laurensystems.com. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And I'll see you online, wherever you can find me, usually my forums. But hey, there's some social links on lawrencesystems.com. You can contact me as well. Thanks. Thank you.